1975, the city had no money. So there were like thousands of homeless men on the street all the time. I mean, people came here, the painters, and writers, William Burroughs, because it was quiet, and you could be anonymous, and you could hide and think thoughts. And nobody would come down here because they were scared. So it was sort of like the outlaws and the rebels and the homeless uh, all lived together. And, and you never looked rich on the street, because then you get mugged. So uh, you always looked homeless yourself. So everyone blended together on the street. We all looked homeless. The bums protected us because nobody, all these rich people with briefcases and babies, my God, they couldn't live with 5,000 homeless men. This is the Bowery, how it used to be when I came here in 1975. Just a single, lonely, white man walking in their old, thick overcoats along this empty street full of broken down buildings and broken down fire hydrants and, and old scraps of lumber. But that was sort of the essence of the old Bowery, where people came to disappear and be anonymous. The Bowery, the Bowery, take me back to the Bowery. The times were good and the drinks were good. Oh, whoa, 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 the Bowery, the Bowery, the Bowery, the Bowery, take me back to the Bowery, the times were good, the things were good. This was an old beer garden. See right down here? This was a beer garden. This whole thing had an outdoor space and everything. This is the Half Moon Bar on the Bowery, one of the last bars. And one day in 78, I was walking down and we went in there and my friend and I, Colleen, had a beer. And then suddenly there was this beer sitting on this table in the sunlight. And it was such an extraordinary shot, just the beer in the glass. These men must sit and just meditate on their lives day after day after day and have a beer. And that is their lives, having a beer. Well, that, there was a bar on every block around here. There was one right there. Right. The, the Dover Bar was over there. Yeah. There was a, uh, you know, but that was, was years. That was years ago. The camera caused me to focus on the moment and to relax and to look into someone else's soul. He told me the story. I said, "What happened to you?" Because I had a cast on my hand, and he said, "Well." I was on this train station in the subway and someone pushed me in front of the subway and I lost my leg. But this is the dense underworld, the darkness area, the homelessness, and the people born into life with nothing and going to leave. And this is a study of compassion of the heart and non-judgment. Lafayette was a follower of Jesus. And every day he'd go out with his white rabbits and he'd dance in the street. And he just danced for joy. And he'd go on tow, and he, that's how he was. He'd wear the cross, and he'd dance for joy. And it's hardest to really love people who are broken and poor and ugly and insane. It's very hard. When I was over there in Vietnam, and that helicopter, that M6 machine gun in the bush trying to get you out of there, I didn't say no. This is my country. I was born in the USA. This was never, this was always a place for people to drop out who had very little money. That's why artists came to the Bowery, because they could find beautiful lofts, beautiful light, and large spaces for $150 a month. There was no heat, maybe no water, but they had a space where they could do their artwork. Can I get some money, please? I have done. One day, I was walking with my camera and decided to do this dance for me and just celebrate life. And it was like, even in the midst of all the misery and the one leg, he could find the joy of just being. And I photographed that and called it joy. These buildings are mountains, and look, they're made like pyramids. <laughs> See, they want the pyramid energy. Look, look at all these little pyramids. When I walked on the street, this woman seemed to be there, she was waiting for a bus, but it was the pain in the woman 
the years of having a, a, a spine hunched over and, and that little scarf. I mean, she's so old and she's so alone on the Bowery. I don't, I don't know. It was like from another world. Good light today. Bowery seemed to be a refuge for homeless people, for maimed people, for people who lived outside the system and maybe had been so bruised, so torn, that they couldn't even crawl back into reality and somehow they could find a home here. And they drank. Dog walks down the street and sees reality and the things he sees are something like himself and the things he sees are nothing like himself. The dog walks down the street and sees reality. Bad dog. You know, I love the eccentricity of people and the individuality. Because, you know, it's all high drama. And I love the drama and uh, individuality, and that's what these people have. The uniqueness and, and toughness of living. And that's why my work on the Bowery has a different quality than most people's, because I would didn't separate myself from these men so much as I did see myself in the men and women who were homeless. And that taught me to be grateful for my life. It's my little lifetime. My little lifetime. <laughs>